using the gift card hack with earning two times the points at Safeway, you would need to spend $4,400 in gift cards to earn 60,000 Alaska Airline miles. When I go to the grocery store and do these gift cards, I'm earning four times the points on my Amex Gold and all of the Alaska Airline miles I'm redeeming with the rewards from Safeway. So you can be redeeming 3,500 Alaska Airline miles per week with each category. Hey there, points people. You just heard a clip from Betsy Wilson from her Alaska travels. Betsy is a points enthusiast based in Alaska. Her daughter had been on over 50 flights by the age of two, and she took her first international trip in 2023, all thanks to the power of points. In this episode, expect to hear about why Betsy puts so much focus on the Alaska Airlines program and why it might be the right program for you, how grocery shopping at Safeway can earn you Alaska miles, and so much more. Previously, you couldn't transfer any of the flexible credit card points like Chase or American Express to Alaska Airlines. But just recently, Built added Alaska Airlines as a transfer partner, so you'll be able to transfer your Built points to get some amazing deals with Alaska Airlines. If you're interested in supporting this show when you apply for the Built card, check out geobreezetravel.com slash Built Referral. And if you're not sure what card is right for you, I offer free credit card consultations at geobreezetravel.com slash consultations. And we have links to the Built card and the free consultation form for you in the show notes as well. And now, on with the show. Welcome to the GeoBreeze Travel Podcast, a show for anyone wanting to level up their travel hacking lifestyle. I'm your host, Julia Menez. I'm a travel hacker, coach, speaker, Filipina American ENTJ who loves solid travel gear and using shortcuts on spreadsheets. On this show, I'm on a mission to bring you travel hackers from all walks of life to help you level up your travel hacking game. We dive into credit cards, miles, points, strategy, mindset, and the secrets behind how to travel the world for next to no cost. So let's get hacking. Hey, Betsy. <laughs> Welcome to the GeoBreeze Travel Podcast. Thank you, Julia. I'm happy to be here. I am so excited to have you here and to talk about traveling to Alaska as well as Alaska Airlines and how some people can fast track their status in 2024 and why they would want to. Before we get into all of that, tell us about you. What's your background? How did you get into the game of points? I started travel hacking in 2021 when I had my daughter. So I've always traveled. I've always had the means to travel. And then I became a mom and it was like, <laughs> kind of came to a stop financially and like time-wise. And I knew that I wanted to continue traveling. So I really dove into travel hacking when she was like two months old. We've been traveling since she was six weeks old. She's been on 59 flights as of last week and she's just two years old. So travel hacking has just like really opened up more opportunities that I never knew were possible. And then I really, really honed in on Alaska Airlines because, of course, I live in Alaska and I've always flown with them. I've been flying with them for 26 years. I was, I first started flying with them when I was five years old as an accompanied minor. And so pretty loyal to them. And also I do believe that they offer like a ton of benefits that you can maximize. What is it like flying as an unaccompanied minor? the best. So I was just telling somebody about this the other day. It really set my expectations of traveling really high because there were, it was like lounge status because they had areas for us kids to go play with food, activities, people watching over us. I was always checked on on the airplane without asking for anything. It was like, what can I get for you? What can I do for you? And then on top of that, it was just like the experience of meeting other kids who are traveling and just having that like one-on-one -on -one dedicated assistance like the entire time you're traveling. Why were you an unaccompanied minor at age five? Okay, so this is a good question. When I was five, my parents were split up and my father was living in Oregon and my mom was living in Alaska and the agreement, custody agreement was two weeks on, two weeks off. So up until first grade, I was flying back and forth um, from age five to six from Alaska to Portland, Oregon. And so your whole life, has it just been Alaska Airlines or were there, are, are there other airlines that service Alaska much? I'm actually not too familiar because I've never been. 
Yeah, no, there are. We have Delta, we have American, and those are like the big ones. The three big ones are Alaska, Delta, and American. I can honestly say I've never really flown on either of those airlines. It really has just been Alaska Airlines. That's just because they have the, I think they have the most availability and opportunity to fly in and out of Alaska and around Alaska. Are most of your trips these days, along with your very small daughter, is it from Alaska to domestic places or are you flying internationally from Alaska? What's kind of the process there? So our travels thus far have been domestic and we frequent New York. My in-laws are from Long Island. So my daughter's been to New York seven times and my father now lives in Arizona. So we frequent Arizona a lot and I have a ton of friends in California, which we have visited multiple times as well. And then we are taking our first international trip with her, which I did book on points to Germany this summer. What route are you taking? We are going direct from Anchorage to Frankfurt. That is good to know that that route exists. I was like, are you going through Seattle or where is that going through? Usually, so it's usually during the summertime, they offer incredible direct flights from Alaska to Europe to attract tourists to come to Alaska. Are there a lot of flights that are available in the winter months of Alaska when everything's just dark or you just gotta hunker down at that point? There are a lot of flights, but generally everything is through Seattle or Portland or LA. Those three are like the main destinations that you have to go through in order to get practically anywhere. Yeah, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. So how long have you had Alaska status and what status do you have right now? So I've been a mileage plan member for 26 years. And then in 2013, I was an adult and I got to start traveling more by myself and attained MVP status. And since then I have had status with Alaska Airlines and this year and the past three years, I've had MVP gold. Do you get that normally just by flying or credit card spend? With Alaska, we've had John Nickel Dandrus from Nomos Coach on the show to talk about how he got Alaska status. And a lot of it is flying just cheap first class fares, like they'll just jump on mistake cash fares to London or something else like that. They're based in Seattle. But for you guys, how are you getting your status? Yeah, that interview you did with Nomad's Travel was incredible. I actually learned a lot and he made a couple of great, like valuable points, but all of my points are miles towards status was flying. And I didn't learn until recently the hack of the EQMs being two times 200% the EQMs for first class until recently. So yes, I was flying just paying full fare prices for tickets and just flying 48,000 and above miles a year. Is that how most people that you know who are in the, the world of points and miles are earning Alaska as well? Because it's not quite like American Airlines or something else where you can just spend money on the credit card, put $200,000 a year, you get executive platinum without getting on a plane. Hyatt has something similar. A lot of the other hotels and airlines will just say, like, just get our card, but spend on it. With Alaska, you have to have actual miles, right? Is there a way around that if somebody's like, the Alaska program's so valuable, but I don't fly that much? Yeah. So they did introduce, they're kind of following suit and introduced this year that you spend a minimum amount on the card and you can earn X amount of miles and it can be up to 20,000 um, each per year based on the amount that you spend. How many EQMs do you need for the different status levels? So it starts with 20,000 for MVP and then goes moves on to MVP gold is 40,000 miles. And then after that, it jumps all the way up to 75K. And then after that is 100K and then that's where it stops. You can get million miler status, which is MVP gold, the 40,000 EQMs for life, but that is 1 million miles flown EQMs with Alaska Airlines. And I, my, my father who is, who flies to and from Alaska every two weeks and has for the past 40 years to work in our oil field is still not there yet. It's very hard to attain. <laughs> So with the EQMs, which are elite qualifying miles, you said you can get 20 of them waived just by putting spend on a credit card and that'll get you to MVP status, which is kind of like discoveries for Hyatt or is like the base level where there's actually something. Yes. Okay. So you can get up to 20,000 EQMs um, spending money on the Alaska Airlines co-branded credit card. And then from there, you still have to fly, correct? 
Yes, that is correct. And there is unfortunately no pooling or any kind of, you can't fly, somebody else fly for you and earn those EQMs. What does the MVP level get you? If someone's like, oh, maybe I should put this much on a card, get my 20,000, how much do you have to put on a card and what do you get out of that? What's kind of the input output ratio there? With the credit card, you can earn 2,000 EQMs for every $10,000 you spend on the Alaska Airlines co-branded credit card. You can earn 2,000 EQMs for every 10,000 yes. that you spend up to 20,000 EQMs. Not the best deal, but another option if you're not flying as much or want to diversify the airlines that you're flying on. So you can spend up to $100,000 on the card and then get MVP status. Mm -hmm. Is it worth it? I believe so. As somebody who flies on Alaska Airlines and has been MVP for almost 10 years, the upgrades, the added benefit of having the MVP hotline, which is a dedicated line where you can call and make any kind of changes to your flights. And it's nine times out of 10, it's not a wait, which is very valuable, especially in situations like they had the last couple of weeks. And like I said, the upgrades, they do give a discount on the Alaska Lounge, which is $100 off if you have MVP status. And for MVP Gold, I think MVP Gold is the sweet spot. It's that spot where you can get to where you get all the benefits of MVP and a little bit more and a little bit more recognition from Alaska Airlines, which they do pride themselves on customer service. And that really starts to show when you become MVP Gold. So what would be the strategy to get MVP gold then? Are you putting $100,000 on the card to get through the first 20 and then still need to get 20,000 miles? Or what's the strategy to get to the sweet spot? Because I'm sure a lot of people are already listening to this being like, I'm not putting $100,000 on an Alaska card. I don't blame you for that. A lot of the time, I think the $100,000 could be valuable to like somebody who owns a business who has a ton of money going out. But for me this year, I am going to be utilizing flying and then booking first class fares, which will get me two times the EQMs for our travel. For example, when we fly to from Anchorage, Seattle, Seattle to JFK, which we are going to be doing two times this year, we will be booking those as first class fares, which will give us just under 15,000 EQMs per trip per person. So that's our plan. So with just two trips, you've already completed the 20,000 EQMs that you would need. Yeah, no, I haven't completed those yet, but those are uh, plans for this year. So with the two trips that you're taking, after you complete those two trips, you'll have the last 20,000 that you would need. How are you getting the first 20,000? Are you putting that much on a credit card or you're like, yeah, no, <laughs> no, no, I am not quite there yet, but honestly, just flying. That's what our thing is. I, I book weekend trips for us. We travel a lot to visit family. We go down to Arizona like four to five times a year. And also it's just mainly from flying. I don't foresee myself getting any EQMs on the credit card this year. Is this on the personal or the business Alaska card? Okay. So this is for the personal card. Yeah. When you mentioned that business owners can put a lot of their spend on this card. What kind of opportunity cost are you looking at if like where you're putting your expenses on different cards? Cause somebody's like, well, for $120,000, I could get Hyatt Globalist or I could get halfway to American Airlines Executive Platinum where I can do a lot of sign up bonuses. How do you kind of prioritize mm -hmm. where to put your expenses to get different points? So I do prioritize the Alaska Airline credit cards because I feel that the Alaska Airline miles I redeem are valuable for our travel. With the One World Alliance, I have been able to book our tickets to Germany, our tickets to Bali, tickets around the state of Alaska for insane amount of value. And so I really do focus on spending our money both on the Alaska Airlines credit card and the Amex Gold card. Yeah, I've been able to get some pretty good Alaska redemptions as well. I think we flew Tokyo to Kuala Lumpur on JAL using Alaska miles. It was only 30,000 points or so per person. And then we used it for South America as well, which we're taking later this year from Los Angeles down through Santiago, Chile into Buenos Aires. And that was 45,000. And then on the way back, I think it's Brazil through Lima, Peru, back up to Los Angeles for 45,000. And all of it's in business class. So... Yeah, you can get a lot of value out of the yes. Alaska miles. Yes. So 
in regards to that, the trip that we are taking direct Anchorage to Frankfurt is on Condor in business class and was booked with uh, 55,000 Alaska airline miles per person. So I hear that you have some fun tricks with Safeway and Alaska Airlines as well. Is that with earning points or status or what exactly are you doing there? So this is a gold mine and I'm really excited you brought this up because there is a backdoor way to earn Alaska Airlines through Safeways. And there are 917 Safeway locations around the United States. They're not in every state, but they are in a lot of states. And there is a program with Safeway and Alaska Airlines where you can connect your Safeway account as a loyalty partner with Alaska Airlines. And this is so important that if if anyone does pursue this, that they do that first and foremost. And what you can do is go grocery shopping and earn rewards with Safeway and then redeem those rewards for Alaska Airline miles. Now, the tricky part of this hack is, is that Safeway has two apps. They have a Safeway app and then they have what they call a Cars Safeway app. And Cars is Alaska's local Safeway. It's branded by Safeway, but it is Alaska's local Safeway. And the only way to redeem the rewards that you earn at Safeway are through the Cars Safeway app, which is different than the regular Safeway app. How do you spell Cars? Just C-A-R-S? C-A-R-R-S. Mm-hmm. Okay, so let's walk through the step-by-step where if somebody's like, oh, I have a Safeway. So you can just download the Cars app, C-A-R-R-S. Mm-hmm. You can then link it up to your Safeway account, earn Safeway points. And then is it pretty intuitive from there to just redeem your Safeway yeah, points? You, yeah, I mean, as long as you have that car Safeway account link to your Alaska Airlines mileage program, which is so important. I've had people go and redeem the rewards for miles and it wasn't linked beforehand. And it, it, there's just no way to, for them to track it. But going in and adding them as a loyalty partner, you don't, you just need the number. You don't need to you know your password or whatever. You just go in, put the number in and you got to make sure that number is right. Like exactly your mileage number. And then you go to Safeway, you use your phone number. When you check out, their points are added to your account. A hundred points at Safeway equals one reward. And then you can redeem that one reward for Alaska Airline miles. How many Alaska Airline miles would you get with one reward? So it's interesting. They did for one reward is 300 Alaska Airline miles. But as you redeem more rewards, the value goes up for your rewards. So for seven rewards is 1300 Alaska airline miles. All right. So for everybody who's like at the gym or driving their car right now, and they're like, I'm not going to break out a calculator. What are some of those just kind of like rule of thumbs? If you spend this much in groceries, you're going to earn this many Safeway points. This gets you that many Alaska miles. So Safeway just offers a ton of options to earn rewards. Generally, if you go under their deals, they have two times the points, four times the points for a variety of their products that are in their store. So you would go in and you would redeem or you would click those deals and then you would go shopping for your products. And But if you were to not do any of that, I'm sorry to backtrack, for every dollar spent at Safeway is one point. And then 100 points equals one reward which equals 300 Alaska miles. So if you're mm-hmm. spending a hundred dollars at the grocery every week for your family, mm-hmm. you could eventually just redeem those for 300 Alaska miles, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep. And there is another, if you want to be pro, if you want to level up Safeway offers two times the points on all of their gift cards, except Visa gift cards and Safeway gift cards. Do they sell Amazon? They do. And Target and Lowe's and Home Depot and a ton of just amazing places that you probably are spending your money. Okay. So to walk through this example again, because I'm sure a lot of people are like pulling over on the side of the road at this point (laughs) and like grabbing a notebook. They're like, okay, I shop at Target a lot. So same. if, if they're like, okay, I shop at Target or I shop at Amazon, I can spend $100 on $100 of Target gift cards or Amazon gift cards or anything like that, then you're going to earn 200 Safeway points off of that $100. And then you can redeem those for 600 Alaska miles. Yeah. Easy math that I just do for my own self is $50 in gift cards is one reward. 
and then you can redeem. So with the Safeway Redemption Program, they only offer redemptions for Alaska Airline miles on rewards of one, two, three, four, five, and then seven. They skip six. No idea why. Each of those re reward categories equals X amount of Alaska Airline miles. If we are redeeming Alaska miles for business class flights, which I think is what most people want to do because the award redemptions are so good. If you want to go to South America, it's like around 30,000. Europe's 55,000. You can get from San Francisco over to Tokyo for 60,000 Alaska miles, which I think is the sweet spot that a lot of people like because between Alaska and American Airlines, 60,000 in business class to go to Tokyo is like one of the sweet spots that you can do. How many, I feel like this is like middle school math. How much do I need to buy in Target gift cards from Safeway in order to come out with 60,000 Alaska miles? Using the gift card hack with earning two times the points at Safeway, you would need to spend $4,400 in gift cards to earn 60,000 Alaska airline miles. That's like a sign-up bonus. That's not too bad. If somebody was like needing to meet a sign-up bonus on like a Chase Sapphire Preferred or something anyway, it's $4,000, you buy a little bit more than $4,000 of gift cards. And I know a lot of people listening are like, oh, I spend way more than $4,000 at Target or Amazon or wherever you shop. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a little bit more than $4,000, you buy some of those gift cards at Safeway, you're going to earn a whole bunch of Safeway points, redeem them for rewards, and at the other end, that'll come out to about 60,000 Alaska miles, which gets you a business class ticket to Japan. Beautiful. <laughs> and I was just searching for this while you were chatting as well, and Frequent Miler says this works with Albertsons as well as Safeway, so if you guys don't have a Safeway near you, but you do have an Albertsons, this supposedly works there as well with the exact same process and scanning through their article, it looks like the redemption rates are the same between Safeway and Albertsons. Not sure if it has to be the car cars app there too, but I will do a quick update for how to redeem those through Albertsons as well. But that is a gold mine way to, to get some Alaska miles for people who are like, I am not going to fly that much. I am not going to buy first class seats to London or New York or anywhere with Alaska, mm -hmm. but I like these Alaska miles, what can I do? And you don't have to have an Alaska credit card to do this, right? You can buy these gift cards at Safeway, which like there's thousands of them across the country. You can use any credit card you want, buy these gift cards, get Alaska miles. So for everybody who's like, should I get the Alaska card? Maybe, but it's not on my top 10. Yeah, absolutely. And honestly, I double up with the Amex Gold and get four times the points on all this money that I'm spending. I'm earning, when I go to the grocery store and do these gift cards, I'm earning four times the points on my Amex Gold and all of the Alaska Airline miles I'm redeeming with the rewards from Safeway. Yeah, for sure, because all of this is coding as grocery store purchases. Do they get weird when you're buying like a gazillion gift cards or is it usually just like yes. Santa banana? So... It's interesting that you bring that up because last year, two times, Alaska Airlines did a promotion with this partnership program where they increased all of these miles that we just talked about by three. So we were redeeming seven rewards for 3,900 Alaska Airlines miles. They did a promotion for two weeks, two times last year where they tripled those miles. So we were redeeming seven rewards for 3,900 miles. So all the numbers that we said before where you're spending like, we'll call it $4,500 to get a free flight to Japan, then you could just buy a third of that. So like $1,500 of gift cards, do like the triple promotion. And then you bought $1,500 of target gift cards at a Safeway and cash it out for a business class flight to Japan. Yeah. Or if you want to think about it the other way, spend that $4,400 and get let's say three business class tickets to Japan. 180,000 Alaska Airlines miles. I think one of my clients topped out at 140,000 last year. They were doing a remodel on their home and went and did a ton of Lowe's gift cards and they just soared with this. With that promotion that came up, you were also able to redeem these categories more than once, whereas you can redeem these categories once per week with this program. What do you mean you can redeem them more than once per week? Like when the points are gone, the points are gone when you redeem them, right? Right. But say you have 14 rewards with Safeway. Each week you can redeem seven rewards and then it refreshes the next week. So every month you can redeem seven rewards four times. Oh, you can't just do like 10 all in one week. They cap you 
and how much you can redeem them for each week. So, okay, that's probably good for everybody who is listening to this. We have a contingent of people who are constantly just trying to figure out how to freaking commit low key financial crimes where they're like, all right, let's just like keep scanning. Let's just like flip a whole bunch of Target gift cards. Good. There's a cap on this so that you're, you don't become a total weirdo with the churning of the cards. Yeah. And back to that comment where if you have 10 rewards, mind you, there is, you can redeem each category once per week. So you can be redeeming 3,500 Alaska airline miles per week with each category. What are the different categories? So we have one reward is 100 Alaska airline miles. Two rewards is 20 or 250 Alaska airline miles. Three oh. rewards, mm -hmm. So each of those categories can be redeemed once per week. Okay, so you could do one plus two plus three plus four plus five plus seven. So whatever that is, 50, 22. It won't be like the highest valuation because you get the best valuation at the seven reward. So if you're maximizing for like cents per point or whatever, like value per point, and you want to just do seven, like the category seven per week. But if you're like, oh no, I'm maximizing for let's go hard, then you can do all of these are and this is all through the app right you're not just like walking up to a safeway cashier and being like look at me i'm crazy don't do that <laughs> no and i think that you had mentioned do they have a cap on buying gift cards during this promotion their system did short out when you would go purchase gift cards and they were limiting us to only buying i think it was like 50 gift cards a day per store so you would have to just go to a different store and get gift cards from a different store, a different because, store. because 50 gift cards per day at one store was not enough. So you had to go get another batch of 50 gift cards I mean, at more stores. <laughs> I earned with this program last year, which mind you, I started it in April of 2023, 84,850 Alaska Airlines miles. That was April to December. How much did you spend in gift cards? Did you track? I did not track, but there is a, another level to this game, and that is quite often Safeway offers a bonus on gift cards, certain gift cards. So when I was telling you about my friend who bought those Lowe's gift cards, during the time that he purchased those, the promo was 10 times the points on all Lowe's gift cards. So he would spend $100 on Lowe's gift cards and get 10 rewards. Yeah, that's like a thousand Safeway points. So you're getting well over a thousand Alaska miles off of that. Okay. Yeah. This is going to turn into, there's going to be like pudding guy, except it's going to be like target lady. She's going to buy tens of thousands. I can see it already where someone's going to be like, was this because of that? Like Alaska girl on the geo breeze travel podcast where this lady bought, like <laughs> it's going to show up on some magazine, some New York post thing. Lady mm -hmm. buys $10,000 of Target gift cards, buys all the Stanley mugs, flies for free to Japan. It's okay. I love that. I love that. I would, I would love for somebody to do that. <laughs> Are you going to be that lady? <laughs> Who knows? Who knows? I do have a kid, so I do buy a lot of things from Target. <laughs> and Amazon and, and all mm -hmm. of the other places. Mm -hmm. You mentioned they had 10X on Lowe's. What are some other stores where you oftentimes see these different stackable promos? Yes. Cabela's, Airbnb. Last week was, don't laugh, Fandango. It was 10 times the points on Fandango cards. It is very random. I haven't really seen a trend or any kind of pattern, but they do offer them very frequently and they will stack them. So it will be multiple options of gift cards at 10 times the points. How are you finding these? Are you like physically flipping through the Safeway catalog that comes to your house every week or it's just in the app? Nope. These are all in the car Safeway app and they're under the deals. And every time I go to the store, I start out by typing in gift card into the deals search engine. And then it'll just tell you like, here are the ones that have 10 X. Very just important that these deals are clipped before you purchase the gift card. Ooh, good tip. Yeah. Don't just like take a screenshot and then go insane. Everybody speaking of going insane, does your local Safeway cashier like ever get weird about this where he or she is like, Betsy, what are you doing? Why, what are you doing? It's small. It's a small enough town, even though it's not that small. I live in the city in Anchorage, Alaska, that they do recognize me now. And, but no, I think they just appreciate my genius, honestly. It never codes weird where you're like, okay, make sure you scan a banana or make sure you like pay for your actual groceries first before doing gift card shenanigans. Cause 
especially if you're using Amex on this, like Amex can get weird real quick with like it flags this problem for so many people. I've never had a problem with it. I knock on wood that I've never had any issues with Amex coding it differently. I do just purchase it with my groceries. I don't generally don't purchase it separately. I'm trying to think back if there was any kind of situation. I think the only situation was the cap on the amount of gift cards that they were able to sell in a day. And a little tip that I do when I go grocery shopping, and this happens every time I go to the grocery store. So I also use Fetch, which is just another resource to earn a few dollars. And I always look at my Fetch to see what the total amount of the bonus receipt is and I always get a gift card to meet that bonus amount so I will go to the store and right now it's $210 I will go to the store and just grab an Amazon gift card run all my groceries and then bring up the total to $210 so that I can scan the receipt and earn additional rewards on fetch and then of course I'm just stacking up points like that with Safeway. Because you are still earning the normal one point per dollar with just normal groceries as well. So mm -hmm. it's not like you have to buy gift cards to then just buy food, which I think a lot of people fall into that game of like, all right, what do I actually need to live the life that I want to do? And yeah, they just get into strange gift card games. Are you in the reselling world as well? Because I'm sure a lot of the resellers listening to this right now are just like, oh, I can resell the Stanley mugs. Oh, I honestly, I don't, I haven't dipped into that. So I don't know. It's a crazy world out there. I'm sure all the resellers right now are like, oh, yes. I'm going to replay this episode. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure you made a lot of people very excited with this episode. As we kind of wrap up here, any other tips that you want to give people for Alaska Miles or what would you say is the, the number one best tip other than this one, which was like you mentioned, gold. Any other tips you want to share with our audience today? I do. I have one that I've helped a ton of people who are coming to Alaska and they want to go check out other areas in Alaska. So Alaska Airlines, unfortunately, does charge a lot of money to fly inside of Alaska. For example, my daughter and my husband came to visit me at work in Prudhoe Bay and the tickets costed for a cash value of over $850 per person round trip. And that's for an hour long flight, 624 miles. They really have capitalized on us Alaskans and, but using your miles for the flights inside of Alaska is the best value for your miles. You will bring each mile up to 10 cents when booking your travel inside of Alaska with Alaska airline miles. Generally there are anywhere from 5,000 to seven and a half thousand Alaska airline miles per flight. But like I said, those tickets that are 5,000 miles were $450 a piece. Yeah, there's a lot of those where if you're flying into small towns or something around the Midwest where you're like, it's just like a few points because the distance is so short, but because you're servicing such a remote airport, it can be very, very expensive to mm -hmm. do those. And so, yeah, you can get a lot of cents per point in Alaska as well by yes. taking advantage of those short hops with points. So. My advice is to, if you come to Alaska, you pay for the tickets to come to Alaska that you fly into Anchorage and then book mileage tickets from Anchorage to any destination you want to go. Fairbanks, Barrow, King Salmon, Kodiak, Juneau, but coming into Anchorage and then booking a trip outside of Anchorage with miles is literally the best value for your Alaska Airline miles. I have recently joined a Travel Boss membership with Emily Eaton Explores, and she's been great for not just points and miles, but content creation and yeah, just really big member of the travel travel world. So Emily Eaton Explores, it's been amazing. Perfect. And where can we find you on the internet? Yeah, I am at Instagram, Facebook, and I have a Stan store. So you can find me at stan.store slash her Alaska travels. Perfect. Well. Thank you again so much for coming onto the show. I'm sure you are going to get a lot of DMs and a lot of questions about like how to capitalize on this. And the people are going to be very excited because Alaska miles are super valuable. They are hard to earn. And this makes it a lot easier without having to 
apply a lot of button seat miles without having to get the Alaska credit card. So thank you so much for this amazing gold mine of tricks. Yes, thank you so much, Julia. I really do appreciate all your content and I cannot tell you how many times you have made me laugh with all the random items that you use as your microphone. It's one of my favorites. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for listening to today's episode of the GeoBreeze Travel Podcast. If any of the cards mentioned in today's episode piqued your interest, please check out the links in the show notes for more information on any of the cards. Also, if you apply for a card using the links on that page, I may receive a commission too, so please and thank you. P.S. I hear the links work better in Internet Explorer or Safari, and sometimes the credit card applications tend to glitch out in Chrome. Additionally, it would mean the world to me if you could subscribe to this podcast leave a five-star review and share it with a friend. And if you would like to make even more travel hacking friends, please sign up for the Patreon to access our monthly masterclass hangouts. We dive deep into a particular points program each month and you'll get to ask all of your travel hacking questions and enjoy being around other people who enjoy points and miles just as much as you and I do. If you would like an invite to the next one, head over to geobreezetravel.com hangouts to sign up to be on the invite list. Take care and happy travels. Mm -hmm.